Hello and welcome back to the channel. For this video I have created a Wi-Fi network scenario and I'm going to show you how easily I could triple the effective Wi-Fi range with only three simple changes. And no, I didn't use any range extender, repeater or even a mesh system. All I used was Unagi. Unagi is a state of total awareness, okay? Only by achieving true Unagi can you be prepared for any danger that may befall you. What I mean by that is I became fully aware of three key pieces of information. First, the best way to install and place a wireless router. Hmm? Second, understanding the wireless environment and setting up the Wi-Fi network accordingly for optimal performance. Third, leveraging some professional Wi-Fi features that can help to extend the Wi-Fi range. So I made some improvements in those three areas which could actually triple the Wi-Fi range of that wireless router. Before we start, I just need to mention that at the moment, as you can see, the Wi-Fi range of this router does not cover the entire house. There are are many dead zones inside and the signal strength in the garage is so weak that it's not even possible to connect let alone in the backyard where there is no signal at all so if i can provide coverage for the entire house garage and backyard i think we can all agree that i have more or less tripled the wi-fi range or at least come close to that which would be great First, let's focus on the installation. Currently, the router is installed on the ground behind the TV where there are other electronic devices as well. For example, the TV itself, PlayStation, speakers, a whole bunch of wires and more. There are many issues here. First off, the router should not be on the ground. It should be elevated to about the height where you usually keep your wireless devices, like a laptop on a desk. This is the best height because the omnidirectional antennas of routers broadcast signals horizontally in all directions. So it is usually strong for devices at the same level as the router. Also, it is best not to place it in a confined space or near other electronics, which can interfere with the Wi-Fi, block the signal, and significantly degrade the range. Because of the nature of omnidirectional antennas, it is best to keep the router in the center of the house, not close to one side. Otherwise, you will be wasting your Wi-Fi signals and not taking advantage of nearly half of its potential. Finally, in a single story house, it is usually best to keep the antennas in a vertical position, again because omnidirectional antennas broadcast signals horizontally around the antennas, in a shape somewhat like a donut. If I keep the antenna horizontal, the bulk of the signal would go to the roof. For a two story house, you might want to check out my other video on the best antenna positioning. After correcting these basic installation guidelines, which should not have happened in the first place, there is already a huge difference in the range. Using a Wi-Fi analyzer, I can see that the garage is now covered by both the 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz bands. The 2.4 GHz signal is great and the 5 GHz signal is good. So this simple correction alone pretty much doubled the effective coverage area in the house. Now you might say, who would install the wireless router in that situation? Well, I personally know people who actually have done that at some point in their life. Now let's move on to the next step, setting up Wi-Fi based on the environment. This could be a broad topic and I have discussed different aspects of it on this channel before. For example, we know that the 2.4 GHz band has a greater range compared to 5 GHz and 6 GHz bands, but it offers lower speeds, so it might be a good idea to set up a 2.4 GHz network specifically for devices that are likely farther from the router and don't necessarily need fast connections. Like like smart home devices and reserve the 5 GHz and 6 GHz networks for devices like laptops and smartphones that need faster speeds and are typically used closer to the router, such as in the living room or bedrooms. Although that is very important and definitely something we should take into account, that is not the focus of this video. In this video, I want to talk about tricks we can use to reduce interference as much as possible. Because Wi-Fi interference cannot only lower speed, but 
but also reduce the range of your Wi-Fi network. Since Wi-Fi uses radio waves, anything that interferes with these signals can weaken your Wi-Fi and reduce its range. One way to reduce interference, which you probably know if you have watched the previous video, is by choosing non-overlapping channels. For example, the 2.4 GHz band has only three non-overlapping channels, channel 1, 6, and 11. If one neighbor is using channel 1 and another neighbor channel 11, you can use channel 6 and there will be no interference. All three networks can coexist with no issues. We have talked about this before. However, here's the trick part. When I set up Wi-Fi for each band, not only can I choose the channel, but I can also choose the channel width, meaning how wide the channel is. Each 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi channel has a standard channel width of 20 MHz, but the space between each channel is only 5 MHz. That's why when I choose channel 6, for example, and use the standard 20 MHz channel width, it covers the area from channel 4 to channel 8, and as you can see, does not interfere with channel 1 or 11. However, if I select a 40 MHz channel width, it now covers channel 2 through 10. This might seem good because it provides twice the bandwidth, potentially doubling the speed, but here's the catch. It also causes interference with pretty much every other channel that my neighbors might choose. Now, more or less same principle applies to the 5 GHz band, but the channels can be much wider. For example, up to 160 MHz in Wi-Fi 6. And there are even more non-overlapping channels available. So long story short, although 40 MHz and 160 MHz channels theoretically offer faster speeds, sticking with smaller channel widths is often better, especially in crowded environments like apartment buildings. This choice provides cleaner and more stable connection, allowing your Wi-Fi signals to reach further and maintain better performance, even when there are other wireless networks nearby. Think of it this way, in a traffic jam, if you have a supercar, it doesn't really matter how theoretically fast it can go because it will get stuck. But if you have a scooter or even a bicycle, it can go through the traffic much easier and most likely much faster. The 20 MHz channel acts like a scooter in a traffic jam. Of course, on a freeway, the supercar is faster, but in the reality of the Wi-Fi world, we are most likely in a traffic jam, so the scooter is more practical. Practical. My original settings were 40 MHz for the 2.4 GHz band and 160 MHz for the 5 GHz band. After adjusting the channel width to 20 MHz for the 2.4 GHz and 80 MHz for the 5 GHz, I noticed a signal strength improvement of 5 dBm for the 2.4 GHz band in the garage and 6 dBm for the 5 GHz band. As a result, the 2.4 GHz band now has a strong coverage in the backyard, while the 5 GHz band is decent. Finally, let's talk about using some advanced features like beamforming. Beamforming can extend Wi-Fi range by focusing the wireless signal directly toward connected devices rather than broadcasting it in all directions. This is achieved through the router's antennas, which work together to send more concentrated beams of data to the devices. By directing the signal where it is needed most, beamforming enhances both the range and strength of the connection, especially at the edges of the network leading to better performance in areas that would otherwise have weaker coverage. I have made sure that in the professional wireless settings, both universal beamforming and explicit beamforming are enabled. Universal beamforming, also known as implicit beamforming, works with any Wi-Fi device, even older ones, by making educated guesses about the device's location to improve the signal. However, it lacks direct feedback from the client device, making it less precise. Explicit beamforming, on the other hand, requires both the router and the client device to support the technology. It allows the router to receive feedback from the client, enabling more accurate and efficient signal focusing. By enabling both types of beamforming, the router can maximize its capabilities to deliver a stronger and more reliable Wi-Fi signal throughout your home.
After making these adjustments, there is now good signal in the backyard for both bands. I think it is safe to say that after making these changes, Wi-Fi range has tripled, which is awesome, and shows how important it is to consider these simple yet crucial points, which all of them are part of a good network design, every time I set up a new Wi-Fi network. Maybe I don't necessarily need a mesh system or a range extender. Maybe I just need to design or redesign my Wi-Fi network based based on the environment and my requirements. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Now, before we end, I just want to have a quick word with you. A lot of effort goes into making these videos, creating the graphics and everything else. I'll try my best with all the tools that I have available to make the videos both educational and entertaining because one of my greatest joys is to be able to share something I know with others. And that makes me really happy. Now, I don't know how successful I've been, but that's my goal. Now, for whatever reason, it seems like social media algorithms are not in favor of the kind of videos I make. It breaks my heart to see that sometimes, even a few weeks after I upload a video, only a few hundred people have watched it, even though I have more than 40,000 subscribers. This is not encouraging at all, especially after spending days on filming, editing, creating graphics, and all of that single-handedly. So long story short, unfortunately I don't get much support from those algorithms and that's why I need your help. Please make sure to like the videos you enjoy. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel if you find value in the content. And share the videos in the IT communities you know. Hopefully this way more people can join us and see the videos. Finally, if you can support the channel, it would be greatly appreciated and would help me to make more and better videos. The link on how to support the channel are in the video description. Thank you, thank you, thank you for listening, and I'll see you next time.